What a hoot. And even more recently, we have at long last finally witnessed Prince Charming marrying a commoner, William and Kate. Recall that even Snow White and Cinderella were both of high birth and were abandoned or alienated by their aristocratic stepmothers. So even in fairy tales of yours, it was unthinkable for Prince Charming to marry a commoner. In order to ensure the feudal, the feudal aristocracy, also known as the caste system, in order to ensure that feudal aristocracy, the, um, which is maintained, that it is maintained even today, royal genealogists finally found an aristocratic link for Kate way back in the 13th, 14th century. The redistribution of wealth may have had its roots in the development of mercantilism. However, what clearly marks the beginning of the end for feudalism is Gutenberg's printing press in 1453. By 1500, there were over 100 publishing houses all over Europe which provided books in large quantities at affordable prices, if you were upper caste. Mass publishing trumped the mon monastic scriptoria where the monks laboriously copied and recopied authorized, authorized texts. And so no longer could the, con the church control the information. And at long, la at long last, learning began to evolve outside of the monastic traditions. This led to the Enlightenment. Still, only the secular aristocracy could have read and afford books. When the American colonists, colonialists fled the continental constraints of the church and the throne, they found new land where they could seize and privately own at the expense of another race. Now, as landowners, they began to see themselves as the landed gentry and soon demanded education for themselves, just, like, just as the gentry of Europe had their own tutors and universities. Without caste, America soon led the way to forge a, uni a universal public school system in the world. The result, public, public education provided the upward mobility needed to put the final nail in the coffin of the caste system, first in the US and then in Europe and Japan and throughout Asia, not so very long ago. So answer is currently educating Nearly 600 highly d disadvantaged children in Nepal, a hundred of which are in colleges and universities. After 10 years in the educational progression, many are now at last beginning to emerge, emerge in droves. In 2009, we had just 12 high school graduates. 2010, 28. 2011, 44. This year, 75. Next year, we will be plateauing at 100 graduates per year. In a decade, we will, have, we will have seen a thousand of these children through college and into secure middle-class careers, which have heretofore been the sole domain of the upper caste. Change is happening, but real lasting change won't happen until a new breed of educated leaders from minorities and low caste, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, are installed in the leadership position. That's why we are recruiting for leaders. What I didn't realize at first was the timing. Because of cell phones, external forces, and the Maoists, the tipping point is imminent. And these children are positioned to bring real change to Nepal. Now the Maoists are successfully pushing for affirmative action quotas in education and employment. So answer children are the first generation, not of high birth, but of high accomplishment. Whereas nearly half of the students in Nepal nationally fail the high school graduation exam. We are 100, 182 for 182 overall with all of our students going on to college. What's more, they are receiving record scores, half with distinction and the rest A's and B's. Remember, these children are all highly disadvantaged and most from highly illiterate families. But just as importantly, we have inculcated in them a degree of social awareness and a sense of responsibility to help others who are disadvantaged. With the very first letter from their sponsors, our expectations are defined. I want you to support, I want to support your education. So long as you work hard 
and get good marks because I want you to be successful. And when you are a success, you must help another needy child go to school, just like we are helping you. Believe me, our children hear that all the time from us, and they know what we expect from them. Our board and staff in Nepal consist entirely of our graduates, our college students and, and graduates have organized an alumni association and are helping others. Soon they will join our first college graduates in sponsoring an answer child. Remember that within 10 years there will be a thousand of these graduates. Answer will then be entirely run and funded by the children. We are educating we will be educating without foreign assistance, without American sponsorship. This is true sustainability. And I can retire at last. <laughs> okay. And that's a note for Isabel. Yeah. I've got to last ten more ten more years. Keep on helping locally, but also consider joining the answer family, because it is very easy and very affordable to send a child to school. If you can spare six dollars a week, the price of a glass of wine or a large latte and the 30 minutes to twice a year to write a letter to your student, you too can help tip this balance. We support our administration with independent donations and fundraising so that all of your donation can go directly to that child's education, not for salaries and overhead.